Well, I know this is not quite how any of us pictured celebrating this night of Christmas Eve. But here we are, gathered together again online. And although this may not be what we had hoped for, I'm grateful that we can still be together in this way. And grateful to be invited into your homes or wherever you may be watching this. Also, tonight we will celebrate Holy Communion together. So I invite you now to gather your elements, whatever they are, remembering that Jesus used what was already on the table. And then we will share that meal together later on in the service. For now, will you join me in our order of confession and forgiveness? You know, I used to think that the prayer of confession was scary. I thought it was a moment designed to make me feel guilty, intended for eyes cast down and shoulders hung low. But that's not it at all. The prayer of confession is an invitation. It's an opportunity to say, this is who I've been and this is who I long to be. So let us pray together. Let us be truth tellers. Let us hold our heads high and speak honestly before God and one another. This is easy to do when we're surrounded by a God who delights in us. Friends, let us pray. Holy God, we admit we don't fully understand the Christmas story. We are not familiar with angel choruses. We have not walked many miles to be counted in the census, and we don't always hear your voice in our dreams. We don't fully understand this story, so we admit sometimes we hesitate to tell it. Instead of running out into the streets to shout that there is a love bigger than we could imagine, we whisper this good news. Instead of throwing open the doors and inviting people in, we simply leave them unlocked, hoping folks will figure it out. Instead of telling the next generation why this night matters so much, we stay quiet, afraid of creating pressure or getting it wrong. Forgive us for our silence. Forgive us for our hesitation. Forgive us for the moments when we fail to share your good news. Plant this story of love so deeply in our bones that we cannot help but share it from generation to generation. Amen. Friends, repeat after me. No matter where we go, no matter where we go, no matter what we say, no matter what we say, no matter what we do, no matter what we do, we belong to God. We belong to God. We are held. We are held. We are loved. We are loved. We are forgiven. We are forgiven. Amen. Amen. My mama told me something when I was growing up that has forever changed my life. She played the piano at our little church at 3rd and Pine Street for 37 years. She tried to teach me to play the piano, <laughs> but I wasn't very good. She would teach me the names of the notes, what a major key is, what a minor key is. She tried to teach me musical theory, but I was just bored. Then, one day, she told me that the best news in the world is found by playing a simple scale on the piano. I had no idea what she meant, so she told me to play an eight-note scale. So I did. I said, how is that good news? And she said I played it incorrectly and that I needed to play it the other way. So I did. Again, I said, how is that good news? 
And she said, I played it the right way, but I needed to add the pauses. The pauses? She said, the pauses. Add them on the first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh, and last note. Now, I was frustrated and said, how can eight notes with random pauses be the best news in the world? Then I got up, walked away, and went outside. Frankly, I didn't care what she was talking about. I didn't like playing the piano anyway. Well, years later, my mama got sick and passed away. As I was thinking about her, I remembered what she told me about the piano. Not only that, I still remember the notes she told me to pause. The first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh, and last note. So I sat down at her piano and played the scale with the pauses. And that's when I realized the good news she was talking about. people from the ages of 2 to 80 years old were asked to fill in the blank for this statement. My story is. From the voices of different generations, here are their answers. Amazing. Just beginning. A wee bit messy with lots of love. Privileged. Hopeful. Full of silliness still unfolding, long but good, one of resilience, incomplete, thank goodness, a work in progress. My story is not just mine, it's tied to yours. Tonight, we tell the story that we tell every year, the story of Christ's birth, the story of love made flesh, it's a story that weaves through every generation. It's a story that picks up the bits and pieces of our narrative and braids us together. So tonight, we light the Christ candle. Because from generation to generation, our story belongs to God. Thanks be to God for a love like that.
tonight comes from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Tonight we tell the Christmas story through songs and scriptures, through our hopes and prayers, with candles and Christmas lights. But Christmas is about so much more than just this night. What happened on Christmas changed the world forever. The world has been changed. We have been changed by the birth of Emmanuel, God with us, by the life of Jesus. And so the reality is that we tell this story over and over all year round, from generation to generation through our histories and actions, through the stories of our lives. We tell this story because it has been woven into our own, because we need it, because it's worth telling. If you've been with us during Advent in the weeks leading up to Christmas, then you already know about our Advent worship series we used for this year called From Generation to Generation, and how the work of God is always unfolding all around us, in and through us, from generation to generation. But even if you weren't, you're probably familiar with the typical themes of each Sunday during Advent, the themes of hope, peace, joy, and love. But again, these are more than just catchy themes or memorable phrases. The things we talk about in worship prepare us for the gift of this story, the real-life consequences of a story like this. Who among us couldn't use a little more hope in our lives, a bit more peace, a good measure of joy, or a whole lot of love. I'd wager we all 
could. Especially those of us who are at the end of our rope, who've lost our peace or can't find joy, who feel unloved or unworthy of love. The Christmas story is especially for you. I was a weird kid. <laughs> that shouldn't really be a surprise to any of you. I'm a weird adult. And now that I have kids of my own and, and work at a church with a daycare full of kids every day, I'm realizing all kids are pretty weird in their own ways. But still, I was exceptionally weird. For instance, I, I was trying to think of the best Christmas gift I ever got as a kid, something I, I really wanted, begged for, hoped and prayed for, and the only thing that came to mind was this. When I was about eight years old, I begged my parents for a treadmill for Christmas. A treadmill for an eight-year-old. I don't know. It's not that I wanted to work out or exercise. I just thought they were the coolest thing ever, and I didn't want anything else for Christmas. Just a treadmill. I was a weird kid, and I'm a weird adult. I didn't always fit in growing up, and that's still true today, especially with other guys. I'm not strong, right? I've never been athletic. I'd rather go see a play or, or read a book than watch a game or, or play a sport. I can't fix things or build things. I'm less industrial arts and more arts and crafts. I don't like hunting or guns or getting dirty. I'm kind of delicate and kind of weird is the point. And just like children, I think we're all a little weird in our own ways, and that's okay. We can admit that here, can't we? I think we can admit that, especially here, in this place, where we tell this story year after year, because this story is weird. Everything about it is weird. Year after year, we tell the story of how God's only Son, the Prince of Peace, the light of the world, came into this world through an unwed teenage mother, born in a barn instead of a palace. How the first heavenly proclamation of that birth came to a few misfit shepherds on a hillside instead of to people of power in the cities. How the very first folks to fully recognize what this moment meant were a handful of magi from the far away east instead of the religious elite in Jerusalem and the nearby north. Everything about this story is weird. In an op-ed piece in the New York Times called Christmas is Weird, Esau Macaulay said this about those magi, Scholars are divided on just who these magi were, but there is unanimous agreement that they were not Jews or worshipers of the God of Israel. They seemingly had no business anywhere near the Holy Child. The magi were probably Babylonian or Persian religious leaders whose expertise ranged from interpretation of dreams to astrology. They made their way to Bethlehem by means of an astrological sign. To make a modern analogy, it might be the equivalent of someone showing up at church on Sunday after her horoscope suggested that she try new things. The story of the Magi is religiously odd. But the oddness appears to be the point. The birth of Jesus was not an event that celebrated the insiders, the people who had it all together. The Gospels of Luke and Matthew depict the birth of Jesus as the gathering of the lower class, the common workers, and the religious outsiders. This story 
didn't happen to the religious elite, to the rich or the powerful. It happened to everyday, ordinary people like you, like me. And it's still happening to us. Each year we tell this story because no matter how our stories are unfolding, this sacred one holds space for them all. God shows up in this story and in ours, weaving them together, threading in hope, peace, joy, and love. No matter how weird you are or how out of place you feel, no matter how different you are, or out of sorts you feel, God has made space for you in this place. God has made a place for you in this story. We tell this story every year because it so clearly illustrates God's desire to be with us, even us, especially us, because it brings us good news including the misfits and the weirdos, including those who feel powerless or unworthy or unwelcome. We tell this story because we need to hear it again and again from generation to generation. Amen. Thanksgiving for Christ's coming into the world. We pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Your infinite love is born to us this night. With choirs of angels, the church proclaims the good news. Send us out as messengers of the hope that has come to all people. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. 
You are pleased to dwell with your creatures, and the whole earth sings for joy. Renew the splendor of creation from the smallest cell to the widest galaxies. Guide us to be wise stewards of your gifts for the sake of generations to come. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Your authority is over the nations. Break the rod of oppression in every land and free all people from fear. Bring peace where there is war and compassion where there is suffering. We pray for an end to continued war in Ukraine. Protect and care for all, especially those who are separated from loved ones on this Christmas Eve. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Your loving kindness embraces everyone in need. Help any for whom this season is lonely or joyless. Comfort those among us or known to us who are experiencing distress of body or mind. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Shelter refugee families across the world and at the southern border. We pray for all experiencing extreme weather conditions, especially dangerously cold temperatures. Unto us a son is born, unto us a son is given. You welcome those who have died into the joyous light of glory. We give thanks for the saints of every time and place, who have praised you with lives of faith and humility. Inspire us by their example to love you by serving others. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to your unending, bountiful mercy. Amen. Every Christmas Eve, we tell the same story of a baby born in a manger. The plot never changes. There are never any surprise twists. So why do we do it? Why do we keep telling this same story? We tell this story because our souls need to hear it. Over and over and over again, like water in the desert, we need to be reminded that God has drawn close to this hurting world. We need to be reminded that God just couldn't stay away. It's true on Christmas Eve, and it's true at this table. Every time we gather at this table, we tell the same story. The story of a Messiah who gathered his friends together for one last supper. The story of a Messiah who loved us so much he just couldn't stay away. So friends, bring the parts of you that feel like the desert. Bring the parts of you that are aching to hear this story again. Because this is good news for you. This is good news for us all. As a church, we believe that communion is a holy and sacred meal, where Christ is present because that's what he promised. A meal that strengthens and encourage us, uh, encourages us for the days ahead. A meal that is for everyone. One we share not only with each other, but with all the saints from all times and in all places. And so tonight, from our own places, we will once again share this meal with one another. I invite you to gather your elements, whatever you're using, and join me in speaking these words. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body, given for you. Every time you do this, remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Every time you do this, remember me. And so we remember the way that Jesus taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you share this meal with one another or with yourself, I invite you to speak these words. The body of Christ, given for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. We who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Arise, shine, for the light has come. I invite you now to dim the lights wherever you are, light a candle, and join me in singing Silent Night. Silent Night, Holy All is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin, mother and child. Holy infant soul, tender Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Friends, as you go from this place, wherever you are, May you go knowing that from generation to generation, we have been claimed and loved. From generation to generation, God has been by our side. From generation to generation, we are not alone. The God of yesterday and the God of tomorrow knows you by name, loves you, and calls you forth, saying, Go, be the person you are called to be. Love wildly, do justice, and come back soon. May it be so. Amen.
thanks so much for finding your way here tonight. I hope to see you again soon, but until then, Merry Christmas. Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain and everywhere. Thanks be to God. by the ministry of Zion Lutheran Church and feel moved to support and participate in its mission, to welcome all people, to grow as followers of Jesus, and to serve all creation, then I invite you now to go to our website, zionlima.org, and click on the Give Online tab, where you can set up a one-time or recurring gift. This ministry and so many others would not be possible without your generosity. However you choose to support or participate in our mission, I thank you. <laughs>